Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I will talk about our work, uh, spatial stream backscatter using commodity Wi-Fi. And this is a joint work with uh, Wei Gong and, uh, and Professor Jiang Chuan Liu. Internet of Things uh, merged the physical world and the digital world. And uh, the IoT applications such as smart control, uh, pervasive sensing, and, uh, the, and, uh, and the intelligent interactions uh, need to deploy a diversity of sensors. And these sensors uh, uh, use different kinds of network protocols to uh, transmit data. Uh, since there are a huge number of sensors to be deployed, a uh, critical issue facing this, uh, facing this network protocol is power. And backscatter communication has, uh, uh, has emerged as a promising solution that uh, enable the IoT sensor data transmission in a cost and energy efficient way. We first look at the comparison of the traditional uh, sensor data transmission and the, uh, and the backscatter communication. Uh, the traditional uh, sensor communication use an RF transceiver uh, to send and uh, receive data, and it may have to uh, it may have to connect to a, a AP or sync node uh, constantly waiting for commands. Unlike the traditional way, backscatter communication uh, uses a reflected signal to uh, to transmit data, and uh, rather than use a RF transceiver, uh, in a backscatter system. Uh, Attack convey the information by changing its uh, antenna's impedance, uh, deciding whether to reflect the uh, uh, signal or uh, reflect the excitation signal or not. An external radar uh, generates the uh, uh, excitation signal and decodes the tag information. Uh, since, the, uh, since the transceiver is an uh, energy hungry uh, component in a wireless system, uh, Backscatter communication has potential to largely reduce the power consumption on portable sensors or mobile sensing devices. Besides using dedicated excitation like RFID devices, uh, recent study has demonstrated that the uh, excitation signals can be uh, wireless TV, uh, FM radio, visible light, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, uh, and LoRa. Uh, in particular, when we uh, look at Wi-Fi, uh, we will find that we, we not only have Wi-Fi devices everywhere, uh, but also uh, have, you, uh, have used it uh, as a connection solution for many IoT products. It's clear we already have Wi-Fi signals surrounding us uh, at home, in office, and other indoor environments. So a straightforward question is how to use the ambient Wi-Fi as an excitation. Uh, if we continue to look at the ambient Wi-Fi, for example, the Wi-Fi APs surrounding us, uh, we will find that, the, uh, that most of them are uh, 802.11n AC APs, and they use MIMO or FDM uh, or modulation to generate uh, excitation signals. And uh, the MIMO Wi-Fi NICs also support rate adaptation based on channel quality, and it can switch between uh, the single stream signal and two, two uh, to multi-stream signal. And based on this, uh, our question becomes how to use spatial stream signal for backscatter communication. Uh, what we want to do in this work is show in this figure uh, a spatial multiplexing Wi-Fi devices is used as an excitation signal. Uh, and, and the backscatter tag uh, use, a, a, use a special uh, you use a spatial stream signal uh, to, uh, to carry the sensing data, and the Wi-Fi receivers uh, decode the sensing data by comparing the original packets and the backscatter packet. There are several challenges. The first is uh, MIMO models. And for single stream, uh, the, the, the data bit contained in an OFDM symbol uh, is consecutive. And uh, for, uh, for multi-stream, uh, the the data bit in IOFDM symbols are not consecutive uh, due to the stream parsing process. Uh, it means that uh, uh, tag modulation on individual FDM symbols would not be demodulated for multi-stream signal. And second is uh, uh, 
how to decode the uh, uh, tag information from all FDM symbols. And we need to synchronize between uh, the uh, tag information and the, uh, and the, uh, and, and the uh, spatial stream data. And uh, uh, the phase change must operate on specific uh, data fields. Otherwise, the uh, uh, beta error rate would significantly increase. And we also have to consider the compatibility issues. And, uh, uh, and a backscatter tag uh, should be able to uh, seamlessly work with different excitation signals. According to the challenges, our solution is from three aspects. Uh, the tag modulation, uh, tag data decoding, and the control signals. Uh, we propose a modulation scheme that allows a tag to convey information by changing the face of OFDM symbols. And uh, we propose a, a decoding process that uh, uh, searches all one or all zero sequences from the demodulated OFDM symbols. And each such sequence would represent a tag bit. And we also use the control signals to notify a tag uh, to automatically, uh, automatically uh, select uh, the corresponding backscattering circuit uh, for, different, uh, uh, for different excitation signals. Uh, the Wi-Fi transmitters' operations are linear transforms over uh, the IQ data vector space. Uh, it means that a phase change uh, on the uh, time domain OFDM wave symbols um, time domain OFDM symbol waveforms um, can be converted to a phase change on the IQ constellation points. Uh, this figure shows the uh, phase change that can be used to convey the tag information. Uh, so the question is why we use these uh, phase change values. Uh, this is because we want to use a, a, a command Wi-Fi devices to, uh, to decode the tag information. Uh, from these constellations, we can see that uh, only the minimum step of 90 degrees can ensure uh, the IQ data after tag modulation still falls in the same constellation. The synchronization follows uh, durations uh, divided in a standard 802.11 n Wi-Fi uh, packet formats. Uh, the phase change operates on individual FDM symbols for single stream packet and it operates on the whole PPDU data fields uh, for a multi-stream packet. Uh, the spatial stream signal is reflected using an RF switch uh, and, the, uh, and a 50 megahertz uh, on for control signals. Um, from, the, uh, from the frequency spectrum, uh, we can see that the backscatter signal is 50 megahertz away from the original Wi-Fi signal. Our decoding process is also at the symbol level. Uh, it includes two steps, and in the first step, we use uh, XOR operations of the uh, original packets and the backscatter packet. Uh, this method has been proposed in previous work, Hitchhike, in, uh, since 2016. And in the second step, uh, we, uh, we propose a, a sequence searching algorithm that searches all one or all zero sequences from uh, the OFDM symbols, and uh, uh, these symbol, uh, the, the sequences have the same, la uh, same length, uh, which equals to the number of bits contained in an OFDM symbol. Uh, we observed in the experiment that the, uh, when we use, uh, 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 using two OFDM symbols for uh, one bit of tag data can, can largely reduce the uh, bit error rate uh, compared with using only one OFDM symbols for one, one bit of tag data. So our searching algorithm only extracts the first, uh, uh, only extract the first uh, uh, O1 or O0 sequence from two consecutive OFDM symbols. Uh, different excitation signals uh, have different uh, packet duration patterns. Uh, we can use these uh, uh, signal patterns to notify the tag uh, to automatically select the uh, circuit for, uh, for, for different backscatter, uh, for, for different excitation signals. Uh, we briefly introduced a tag implementation, and it uh, has two main components. And the first is the, uh, it's a Wi-Fi signal detector. Uh, 
which includes two uh, two components. Uh, we can two uh, two components, and, and the first is the uh, RFA power detector, and the second is the uh, voltage comparator. Uh, the second part is uh, uh, tag modulation circuit, uh, which uh, uh, is implemented in the FPGA. Uh, we use the Cilinx FPGA's IP core, uh, a digital clock manager, to, to generate the phase change. Uh, in the experiment, we first evaluate uh, signal strength, uh, and we use four different types of Wi-Fi signals as an excitation. Uh, the, left, uh, the left figure shows the, uh, shows the CDF of the backscatter packet RSSI, and uh, more than 70% of the multi-stream packet uh, have a, a signal strength from uh, minus 70 dBm to minus 52 dBm. And the right figure shows the uh, signal-to-noise uh, ratio, and, and we can see that the uh, nearly all the single stream packets and uh, uh, and more than fifty more than fifty percent of the multi stream packets uh, have a have a SNR value SNR values from uh, twenty two dB to thirty three dB. This figure shows uh, uh, that uh, uh, the the backscatter signal strength uh, is decreased with the distance between the tag and the uh, Wi Fi receiver. Uh, at 40 meters, uh, the signal strength uh, is decreased to uh, minus 80 dBm. Beta L rate generally increased with uh, distance, and when the distance is less than 3 meters, uh, the beta L rate is uh, less than 6% for all the three cases. The throughput also shows a general downward trend over distance. And for single stream signal, uh, the throughput is up to 50 uh, kilobit per second. And for multi-stream signal, the throughput is up to one kilobit per second. In the non line of sight experiment, uh, uh, the communication range is limited to six meters. And uh, uh, increasing the distance also degraded the performance uh, of BR and throughput. Uh, there are also limitations in, in, in the current uh, tag implementations. And, and multi-stream throughput is very limited compared to the single stream throughput. And uh, it is possible to improve throughput by using multiple channels for the backscatter uh, back signal. Another concern is the power consumption of the FPGA. Uh, our tag modulation uh, circuit may be replaced with uh, uh, analog components or low power FPGAs. And we also need a, a MAC protocol to coordinate the, uh, to coordinate multiple text communication. In summary, uh, we, have, we have built a, a tech prototype to, uh, to evaluate a backscatter system uh, working with MIMO Wi Fi. And, we, and it uses a phase modulation uh, to it uses a phase modulation uh, to convey information, and the, it uses a it uses a OFDM symbol level decoding to search the uh, sequences uh, that represent a tag tag data bit, and uh, it uh, it uses uh, uh, off the shelf devices and is compatible with the uh, uh, with the commercial Wi-Fi devices. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.